I've just discovered something quite interesting about some knockoff Nokia battery packs. I have always thought that these little uh, circuit boards in here can contain protection. And, uh, well, if you look at this one, for instance, there's the gold pads in the back. And there is a DW01 and the dual MOSFET package that you'd normally associate. That's the most common protection in these things. And when I use a battery in something like this, and I solder on directly onto the pads, what I'll often do is that uh, I'll then, the first time I use it, I'll charge the battery from the bench power supply and I'll put a connection to the positive and a connection to the negative and I'll set the current limit in the power supply to 500 milliamps to protect the, to limit the current into the battery. But I'll also uh, cap the voltage, say about 4.5 volts, and then I'll monitor it. And as it gets up to the end, I check the current. And what should happen is that when it gets to about uh, 4.2 volts across the lithium cell inside, plus a slight drop across the circuitry, the protection circuitry, what should happen is the 500 milliamps in the, the meter should suddenly just drop to zero because the protection circuitry kicks in. Uh, so this is, a, incidentally, if, if you recall this one, it's the little uh, solar-powered uh, green LED string. It's been working very well. This battery does a protection. When it's charged up, it does that thing. It cuts off. And the chip that's normally used in these is the DW01. We've come across it before many times because it is very, very common. It's a very simple arrangement. It's a little six-pin chip and it connects to an external MOSFET package. And it does a couple of things. It has a MOSFET for charging and a MOSFET for discharging. Now, I am not quite sure if the diode that actually is built into each of these packages, I'm guessing there's a shock diode will bypass it when one's on, so that, you know, if the charge MOSFET's on, the current can flow in, but via the diode through the discharge uh, MOSFET, which would also explain that slight voltage drop. Not sure about that. But um, one of the MOSFETs is for charge, one's for discharge, and it can it's got the ability using those two MOSFETs to switch it off once it's fully charged or fully discharged. So the chip uh, monitors that across the cell with a little filter circuit, which uh, you can actually, I, I could just show you on this, but it really is so tiny, it's really minute. Uh, but there's a capacitor and resistor for the filtering, and then there's other uh, components that set the, uh, you've got the 1K resistor here that is the current sensing, and the current sensing measures the voltage across the MOSFETs, and if the, uh, it, because a MOSFET is a slight resistance, if the current is too high, it has a multiple threshold that detect overcurrent and then it will detect the short circuit and it will activate a, a function because it's got a little timer and everything inside this chip that will uh, cut it out momentarily and then try again later. It's just got that protection. It's quite clever. Um, Simple enough circuit, it's usually incorporated in these. The other thing that's sometimes incorporated, I, I thought there was a thermistor. Um, not sure about that. It might just be a resistor to the middle pad that sets the, that lets it detect what type of battery has been connected. I think some of them do have a thermistor. However, uh, I was testing a battery before using it. I'd wired it up into the circuit, I'd put the leads on it, and I started charging it, and the voltage went up, and the current stayed at 500 milliamps, and the voltage went up to 4.4 volts, and I thought, oh, I don't like that. That's going way too high. So I stopped the charge there it was growing just that bit too high um no higher than the product that i was going to put the battery in it was the little um, touch table light that charges off usb that was basically charging a lithium cell a bare lithium cell with no protection circuit it was charging it via a diode so nothing could have been worse than that but um i decided uh, that i'd investigate this later on and i have i pulled the circuit board out the first i got this one that i knew had protection and i pulled the little plastic cap off the top and it's all the plastic is all molded around the components but we've got all the components here this one on the other hand has the gold pads on one side and then they've just spot welded the uh, metal strips on the other side with no protection circuitry and just a little resistor in here with the value 683 which is 68 and three zeros uh, 68000 uh, 68k um, which is either faking a thermistor value or it's a uh, it's acting as a sort of battery identifier. Not sure, never investigated them too much. So uh, it shows you that some of these don't have protection and some of them do have protection. Now, what's this one? Does this one actually have a number? This is a... It doesn't specifically say which one this is emulating me because they're trying to avoid Nokia getting ratty about it. That's the BL5C. 
This one's a fairly similar size. This one, yeah, this one looks a fairly similar size. This one's actually slightly puffed up. That's the peril of buying knockoff batteries. Let's uh, hike it open and see if this has protection circuitry. So I'm going to uh, snap the leads off the metal case in here. There's the one that goes onto the case and there's the one that comes in the little tab, a little sort of pip that comes through the case. Let's see if this one's got protection circuitry. So it's uh, moulded into plastic. Let's see if I can not nip my fingers. Let's try and strip some of this away and see if there's anything inside. And see if uh, we just have to proceed with more caution when we're using these batteries. It's a shame because uh, they're very useful batteries, the Nokia batteries. I don't know if some of the batteries have protection, some of them don't as standard uh, actual Nokia's own batteries, or if it's just uh, naughty manufacturers making clones that they economise by not including any circuitry in them. So this one is a wee circuit board going from one end to the other. That's quite promising. Can you see here, I'll just nudge down a tiny bit without going too far. I could try and brighten this image up. Is this going to work? Is it? Yes, it's brightened it up just a little bit. Oh, let's lock that so it doesn't waver up and down in an annoying manner. So the bit I really need is what's underneath that circuit board. I'll take the plastic off the top first. That will uh, give me maybe better access to maybe peel the circuit board out of the plastic if it's moulded in. A lot of them do seem to be moulded directly in just to save space. I suppose that makes it pretty rugged. It stops moisture getting into the electronics. Okay, let's... Flex this and try and peel this circuit board out. It's got the metal strip is connecting there, so that's kind of stopped me from peeling it directly at that point. So I'll just uh, try and get the snips in there. This is very true. The fact it's potted in really does not help. This one has the protection circuitry. It's got the DW01 and a small MOSFET. Can you see that there? One of It's got two little six-pin packages. One is the double MOSFET and one is the DW01 with the support components. So that one has the protection as well. I wonder if that was just a rogue one. Given that the contacts are the same sort of arrangement, I wonder if it's just a rogue one that they've really just over-economised by just omitting that protection and relied purely on the protection built into the phone. Um, double protection is obviously a much better option here. So that's uh, that's very interesting. This battery is fully charged uh, and it's working, so I'm not going to actually open this one up. The other ones were a bit shady, particularly this one that's uh, not got the protection, it's not going to get used. I suppose I could use it. I could solder onto these leads and then just use it with protection. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of disappointing in a way. I'm going to keep this little circuit board. It's useful to keep the little protection circuit boards. You can use them with other cells. Um, but there we go. It just shows that, you know, you can't just assume anything because uh, some of the clones really have skimped too much and left out some of the circuitry.